Hello, everybody. Welcome to Interesting Modeling Company Pop Up Live. So, I thought we'd do one tonight because I have been itching to get on with this since it turned up in the post. Courtesy of Mr. John Walker, thank you very much. And having had a discussion with Drew last night after the show, and we were looking at the rest of the Rubicon range and making ooh ah noises, well, I just thought, no, nah, we're going to do it. I'm going to do a pop up live tonight of this. And it's 156th scale. And rather interestingly, one of the things I didn't realize about Rubicon stuff is that it's actually molded in ABS, not high impact polystyrene. So there is going to be a little bit of added interest with that, with the variety of glues I've got here in order to build the thing. So without further ado, let's go over to the uh, workshop camera. Bear with me a second. There we go. So, essentially in this kit, you get two sprues. One is the vehicle itself, which is this, and the engine compartment. And then the other sprue is a gorgeous set of figures. They are absolutely stunning. In fact, we were looking at some of the uh, figures last night after the show and yeah they they really seem to have got on top of this in terms of anatomy proportions scale everything these are absolutely gorgeous we won't be building these tonight well perhaps we'll put one together but we will be concentrating this evening on the vehicle parts so instruction sheet and this does not look to be particularly complicated up until you want to start adding the figures and that's not even complex either so let us crack on then All right basic toolkit for the instruction sheet somewhere i can see that get the feeling we might need the instruction sheet there we go basic toolkit is I'm using these, the Despi cutters, because I love these. They make a very nice clean cut and it's minimal kind of cleanup afterwards. If I do need to use any cleanup, I'll be using the trusted Swan Morton scalpel with a number 10A blade in there. It's pretty good stuff. A toothbrush. These are the infinity sanding sticks this is a 400 grade one i'm loving these and i'm going to order some more from premium hobbies probably the, after the show tonight but this 400 one is my go-to sander at the moment as you can probably tell and also a flurry skinny stick as well for any smaller areas and well we are going to be trying out various cements tonight to see what works and what doesn't now my go-to always is to me as Extra thin, quick setting. I love this stuff. This is the pale green stuff. It's just brilliant. I love it. I've also got some of their dark green extra thin, which allows a little bit more time to play. And their white cap, which is much thicker. But, and this is good for putting onto mating services when you need a little bit of time to adjust the fit and everything. I've also got here my Mr. Cement S which I haven't used in a long time, but we'll give that a go. I've also got Mr. Cement Deluxe, which I think is a slightly thinner version. I can't remember. It's been so long since I've used this. I'm sure somebody will correct me on that. Also this, which is their limonene cement or their lemon cement, which is apparently it's a non-solvent solvent. We'll see how that works on ABS, if it works or not. I've also got some Deluxe Plastic Magic here. And finally, I've got some SMS extra thin as well. So we'll be trying as many of these as possible tonight on the various parts of this kit to see what works and what doesn't, because you will need a cement that will work with ABS plastic. So, you know, some, some will, some won't. So we'll see what happens tonight. And I will need a paintbrush just to use for some of these. So. Without further ado, we'll crack on. I'm just going to turn the comments on here a second. Uh, right, Dave Swindle says, Mr. Cement X, not, not extra thin. Okay, brilliant. 
Um, excellent. Thank you, Dave. And be careful with Mr. Hobby Glue, as it can be quite fierce. Yep, absolutely. Right. Let's get going. So I'll try and intersperse the construction with some anecdotes to bore you rigid. One of which is many years ago, and we're talking 36 years ago now, was uh, during a particularly sleepless summer night in the summer of 1985, and I was in between going to, i just left the sixth form, and I was just about to start art college in the autumn of that year, and I had a massive bout of insomnia that year, and so I ended up sitting out in the workshop in the garage until the wee small hours, and we're talking, you know, kind of two, three o'clock in the morning. And one of the things that I remember building during that era was the Matchbox LRDG set, which, 176 scale, which just, you know, fabulous, um, fabulous set, contains the Jeep and the Chevy. And the other thing that kind of bear, sticks with me from that time was listening to a little medium wave radio, long wave, sorry, long wave radio. And when Radio 4 shut down in the evening, it would go over to the World Service. And sometimes the uh, signal would kind of shift, phase and shift. And out of the out of the night came A Love Like Blood by Killing Joke, which is a really haunting song. And to have this thing suddenly kind of like, to have the, the, the signal kind of... <laughs> And then suddenly a love like blood comes on. And then as soon as the song finished, the signal phased back out again. But whenever I whenever I, I see LRDG Chevys, all I can think of is Killing Joke, A Love Like Blood, and the summer of 1985. So right, let's have a look. That fits in there like that, does it? Yeah. That seems fairly solid. That's not going to go anywhere. So, we'll try the extra thin first of all, and I've mashed these down tonight so that they don't spill over the workshop. Yep, that seems to have taken. So I think, to me, an extra thin works with, yeah, that's fine. Okay, we're good. We're good with that with ABS plastic, that's good. So let me just make sure that's sitting square. So we'll try the rear axle. What should we try for the rear axle? We will try Mr. Cement S, I think, and see how that goes. Now this, oh, I haven't used this in such a long time. We will see. What I will do is I'll, because this is a slightly larger paintbrush, I will brush them on and make sure we orient this the right way. Yep, that's taken. Yep, that's good. Okay, we can say Mr. Cement S works with it as well. Fantastic. Let's have a drink of tea and see the comments. Uh, Artie Mod says, crossing the Rubicon tonight. Um, yeah, we uh, trust me, Artie, I have absolutely uh, drained that joke dry now. <laughs> um, you know what uh, shining wits we are here on the interesting modeling company so yeah we are crossing the rubicon tonight so those are on fine that's nice and strong yep good 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 let us we're not going to glue the wheels on right now but we are going to just pop them off the sprues and clean them up 
Oh, well, this is lovely plastic. It's nice and it's nice and hard. And it definitely retains detail crisply. I, I wonder whether I throw this one out there. I wonder whether ABS is actually the plastic of the future for these for, for model kits because apparently it's certainly more slightly more environmentally friendly from what I was reading on Rubicon's Facebook page. So yeah, is there we go. Throw that one out there. Oops, Daisy. Is ABS going to be the plastic of the future for our hobby? Has high impact injection mold polystyrene had its day? Discuss. Now, as you can see, this is the that's what I love about these sanding sticks. They just make short work of this and then in with the old toothbrush. Pow. Done. So just flip through these. And I do have also, it was Colin at Freight Dog rather kindly sent through one of the IBG World of War 172nd scale cruiser tanks. So what I've got here is two subjects that will end up needing the same color schemes. So I'm going to build them both and then put them into the paint shop at the same time, whilst I've got all that paint out. And in fact, I think both will end up in the corner scheme, which is going to be fun, to say the least. But as you can see, these sanding sticks make really short work of dealing with seams. Mold, excuse me, mold part lines. And this one is, it does the job, but it's not too coarse. So it does leave a nice smooth surface behind. And one more. The plan is tonight, we'll try and actually get all the construction of this Chevy done so that we can photograph it in the setup in the corner here and put that on the page just to show how quickly these can go together. But we were, Drew and I were looking at the rest of their range last night and they are doing helicopters. They're doing quite a, a large Vietnam range now. And there is some interesting stuff coming out from them. And yeah, I'm really grateful to John for tuning us into the, this company because I will be... Perfectly honest with you, 156 scale is, it's not my thing. It's one of those kind of wargaming scales that's popped up recently. And Italeri have a have quite a, a large range. And I think there are a couple of manufacturers out there as well, whose names escape me. And it's it's one of those it's one of those scales that I kind of think, well, why didn't they just go for 148th? Then, then we'd we'd all be happy, but one fifty six has stuck for one reason or another as part of this whole kind of war gaming culture. So one fifty six it is. So they've it's just never been something that has particularly interested me. I'm aware of the kits, but the scale has just put me off, frankly. But then you see one of these models, and just as a piece of actual scale modelling suddenly your interest is peaked. So that's all the tires dealt with. We are now going to do the rear trunk. So this starts to come together quite rapidly. And in fact, we are gonna do a fair amount of dry runs here before we start putting glue on things. And well, Dave Swindle, up to Daisy, Dave Swindle, has rather kindly said, uh, Tamir, do a specific glue for ABS, which, uh, yep, okay, doke Dave, thanks for that. I will go and have a look at that. But, uh, but what we've got here tonight seems to be working, so we will be thinking about uh, keeping our fingers crossed.
But I do, I do seem to remember that I think it was Kitty Hall, as was. I think it was their, was it their Cougar that they released? Was molded in, I think it was molded in an ABS type plastic because it seemed to throw a lot of modelers off with regard to the glues they were using. But yeah, um, RT Mod, Mod makes the point here when the oil runs out, what are the alternatives? What about wood? Yeah, it, it is rather ironic that this hobby could end up going back to where it started, which is wood kits. I'm sure we will come up with. Uh, I thought we'll come up with an alternative, but it is a finite resource. And it is rather interesting. If you go over onto the Rubicon page, you will also uh, read about their experiences of supply issues with regard to COVID. And I know it has disrupted so many model companies. And you try to explain that to people, and they, they go, oh, no, you can't just blame COVID for it. And it's, well, I'm afraid, I'm afraid you can, because it has a knock-on effect across the whole spectrum, from manufacture to shipping. Everything has been affected by COVID. So, you know, if your little plastic model has not turned up on time, cut the manufacturer some slack, because they are doing their best to try and get them to you as quickly as possible. Um, Okie doke, I've just popped that on there and there is a bit of a gap there. Yeah, well, let's just get that. There we go. That's better. Oops. Oh, for goodness me. I see. All right, that sits on there. Okay. We will. This is the. Uh, this is why we do dry runs, people. So yeah, it's it's worth going over to their Facebook page and having a read because uh, it is having a, a bit of a. It's obviously having a massive knock-on effect for this hobby at the moment. So I think we should be grateful that kits are turning up. That's all, really. So anyway, that's. Okay, it's looking good. Bum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum. Let's get to A10. I did very briefly have the Tamiya 135th scale, uh, one of these, which was on my bucket list of models I've always wanted to build. Um, unfortunately, when Mr. Pollard, Mr. Spencer Pollard, found out I had that kit and he expressed an interest for his legacy project so i passed it on i'm sure i can always get another one we do have a number of oops daisy runoffs here which need to be removed the instructions aren't very explicit in telling you to remove them which is certainly something to me are always very clear about so that's a notable thing that perhaps Rubicon could look at on their instructions in future. I know to remove them, but I think a novice may not realise that they are not supposed to be part of the, the model. Now here, we're going to call in the services of Mr. Flory and just get in there with one of his sticks and tidy that up there.
Do you know what? Oh, we're going to glue this on. We're going to glue this on. Let's get this on. So we will try for this because it's a nice big flat area. We will use the Tamiya white cap and I'm just going to key the surface there so that we've got a bit more grip. Let's get a fair amount on there and just see whether that Just seeing whether that's actually eating in or not yet is. I can feel it. So I think we can say that one works. Yep, that's good. Artie makes the point here, he says, whatever I'm saying that most model stash could take through a number of years without needing to buy another kit. Do you know what, Artie? I actually went up to my attic of doom last year. Well, I, I'm up there all the time, but I suddenly realized that if I tried to build everything that I've got up in the attic, I never will. It's, it's just far too much up there. So I have more than enough kits to last my lifetime if i was to live to be 100 i still wouldn't get through all the kits up there um yeah there's a thought there's nothing like going up to the attic and seeing lots and lots of models 90 percent of which uh have been have been given to me for free um which i don't try and make that sound like an idle boast it's one of the things of working in the industry is you just end up accumulating a lot of kits and yeah a lot of kits in fact i am going to probably move some on to, on to ebay at some stage I'd probably pay the mortgage off if i did because there are a lot up there an incredible lot up there i'm not going to tell you how many but think of a number and it's more than that i'll still go out and buy kits in fact a conversation i heard who did i have this conversation with i can't remember if it was spencer or drew or who was it but essentially i sometimes think to myself i almost wish i could go back to a, a, a time when the model that i was building on my workbench was the only model that i had it was the only kit therefore you kind of value it more because it, it's literally the only plastic model in your orbit at that time. And I think when you get to the stage when you've got lots of unmade kits, I think their value in terms of their kind of that precious feeling, so to speak, slightly goes because you can think well if I'm, I'm not getting on with this one i'm just going to build something else whereas back in the day oops daisy um you know it was did i just knock something off there uh no i didn't thank goodness for that back in the day if you were building something and it was not working out you just stuck with it because that was the only model you had to build so yeah i think there's something to be said for that but all right, let's just yeah, that all kind of slots together quite nicely. I'm loath to start gluing any of these bits on until I've I'm absolutely 100% happy that it's all going to lock in together. So we'll get on to the last piece that we need to do that, which is A21. You can see there, we we are running out of bits here now. 
So the chances are, what are we, 26 minutes into this. So chances are we will blitz through and get this all done by 9 o'clock. So probably an hour. cannot emphasize how fantastic these standing sticks are. Let's have a look. A um, uh, comment here is, just have a quick read here. You don't want to, uh, so, you know, you don't want to think about how many kits we have. Yes, I know. It's a, uh, yes, haha. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, Let's concentrate on this, JM. Let's get this done this evening. Oh, incidentally, this is a, effectively a Scotch Bright. Call it what you will, Merlon, wire, plastic wire wool, but I do find it absolutely indispensable for modelling because it does clean up bits and pieces rather nicely so let's have a look this seems to be dependent on that slotting in there somehow oh. let's get it the right way up man there we go oh, okay right okay i think we need to get this bit wedged in place so let's try Mr. Cement Deluxe. No, this is Mr. Cement. That's the lemon. That's the. I think that's the lemony stuff. I can't remember. So let's try Mr. Cement Deluxe. I've forgotten what this one is. Oh, Lordy. I think this is a slightly thicker one. Yes, it is. It's a much thicker one. So uh, mm, yeah, that's probably not a good choice for that because there's minimal... There's minimal contact there, so we need a runny one to go in there. So we will get standard Tamir Extra Thin, the dark green cap. So we'll just run a bead in there. Push that together, and hopefully that will start to put a bead in there as well just on the inside there i think it's safe to say that to me extra thin works as well so move that into the pile hmm I've got the right piece there. <laughs> yes, there we go. There we go. So that just... Yeah, no, I can see those tabs underneath there. That's good. Okay, we will try for that. We'll try to make the SMS paint. Oh, Stacey, it does come with a... Happy... I always forget this, this thing is in here. And this was supplied to us by our good friends at the Froome Model Centre, whom I am hoping to pop along and see at some stage in the next few weeks, because there are a few bits and pieces I need to get. This admittedly, this brush isn't the best. And I would seriously recommend if you do buy the SMS glue is actually get, get a little paintbrush to, oops, now that's get a little paintbrush to apply it with because it the kit brush is a bit clumsy. In fact, I'm just
it's very good glue and it also does seem to weld ABS as well. Yep, that's on. This is brilliant glue. There are two things I'm not very keen about. One is the, the brush in there, not a problem. We can just get rid of that. The other thing is I just, these bottles, they just have modeling workbench kind of accident written all over them. What I will probably do at some stage is decant this into an empty one of these because I these are just foolproof. These terrify me. These remind me of the old, if you remember the old Humber old Brit Fix liquid poly, which came in that thin upright bottle, which you only have to look at it and it will fall over. It, it is a, this is a fantastic liquid cement it honestly is i've no problems with it as a liquid cement i just not very keen on the way they've you know the, the bottles which i can understand because these are the same bottles they're putting the paint in so they've you know it's obviously economic for them to do but by all means if you can get hold of this stuff then give it a go because it is absolutely fantastic liquid cement and it works with abs we've uh, we've proven that tonight so Let's just work our way through. Now, who's angry? Who's angry here? Let's have a look. Somebody's got a... Oh, Artie Mod's angry. Sorry, Artie. I um, I cannot, uh, for the life of me, figure out what you're angry about, apart from the quality of the jokes on this show, which um, are shocking. Right. That's, well, let's try uh, Deluxe Plastic Magic. It does say ABS, so we should be good for that. This, again, is another one which comes in a terrifyingly easy to knock down bottle which is probably why i haven't used it that often because i just i just prefer using the tamir glues we call them glues they're solvents that's how they work but you know the terminology has stuck with us Of course, you can. Nothing to stop you from putting these into a block of expanded polystyrene. I do believe some people actually do market and sell proprietary 3D printed kind of bases for these glues. So a gap at the bottom there. I'm just trying to close that up. That's fine. Oh yeah, this stuff is. Uh, this stuff does the trick. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. That works. Excellent. Yeah, that's all nice and robust at the moment. So we'll do the last bit is the tailgate. Which drops into place rather nicely. Now we'll try for this, we will try the lemon cement. I get the funny thing this probably won't work but we can but try it so we'll just pop a little bit there and a little bit there I'm just seeing whether it's catching or not on the paintbrush which is always a good telltale sign No, as I thought, that isn't that isn't doing a thing. That's not not a sausage. That's not. Now you see, I'm I'm just literally just wiped it off the surface there. That is not taking. So fair enough. That's why we're doing this. We know that Mister Cement Lemon doesn't work so wah, wah, we will put that one aside so the last one to try for tonight is the mr cement cement deluxe uh, yeah finesse is uh you're not gonna get any finesse with that so we'll try popping some of that on 
mating surface and see what happens. Yeah, I can feel that. I can feel that grabbing. That's a bit like the Tamiya white cap. That's quite a thick glue solvent cement. So let's just. So and yeah, that's gluing, that's taking. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce that with a bit of the quick setting because just for a bit of extra insurance. So this is all down the bottom of the bottle now, and so I'm having to give it a little bit of a shake to get it up. And I know you can extend the brushes. Ending up with a bit of a gap at the bottom there. I'm probably being overly fastidious, but I'm just going to put a little bit more on the inside there, just a tiny amount. hold that in place we're pretty much coming to up to the last few bits and pieces for this so we'll try and rattle through it and let you all go and uh, have your supper for tonight that's done the trick right let us crack on uh arty says hit the angry icon in error but fair point on the jokes homer said that drew's foil pun on sunday was rather good it was rather good actually uh Actually, knock me, knock me sideways, that. Let's get that little interior piece in as well. Clicks in rather nicely. So we've had success with everything tonight except the lemon cement. But that's not surprising because the lemon cement is... is a, it, it's a non-solvent solvent, if you get my drift. And we're just going to extend this out a bit. There we go. What I haven't tried is Humbrol liquid poly, and that is rather shamefacedly. I don't have any here at the moment. I used up my last bottle ages ago, and I do have quite a lot of uh, Tamiya extra thin. So I tend to stick with what what you what you you know what works. So right, let's see where are we next? Uh, says so lower chassis finishing up. So I think we need to get these. Mudguard bits out of the way, whatever they are. Uh, AO7 and AO3. I just popped in there like that. Fine. Excellent. Uh, 
watched it on Thursday night. I just, honestly, I watched a confused man from Dudley building a model live on the internet. And ramble on about killing Joke for some reason. There we go, that just drops in there nicely like so. So we'll just have a bit of Yeah, that just sets it sets it pretty much instantly. Nice. Oh. Gotta say, this this it is good fun blitzing your way through a kit like this. Just build, 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 build. And I'm beginning to, actually, the construction side of things, I used, to, I used to become like a painter and a finisher and a decler. I actually find the construction side these days to be one of the phases I actually enjoy the most because there's a certain level of control over everything. You know, you're gluing things, so things should be going right. It's when you actually start getting around to the painting side when suddenly... You, you are relying on your own uh, talent that um yeah that's that's when i suddenly start to worry and that's usually when things actually stall and i as i sit here looking at the airbrush thinking do i remember how to use this that doesn't drop in there like that yep just check the color drawing let's have a look yeah, okay, that sits like that. So We will take that down a little bit there because it just needs a bit more, a bit more of a key when it comes to gluing. Oh, so it's come together. Cabin preparation work. Now it's saying drill hole if pedal still mount pole B3031 is to be used. See step five for details. Right, okay. Step, step five for details. Pedestal mount. Um, yeah, I think I'll have a pedestal mount on there if you don't mind. So... Um, Bear with whilst I grab a drill. <sighs> so, 
So they're saying that one there, apparently. Well, that's that job done. Let's get rid of that first of all. I'm also just going to have a quick look over this to see if there is. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but just there, get scalpel to point it out. Just along there, there is a mold part line from where this has popped out of a slide mold. So I'm not going to, I'm going to wait until I put a coat of primer on this, then see how noticeable that is. In fact, there seems to be another one there, another one there. So I'm just, I can't actually feel anything on the plastic, but a coat of primer will tell us whether it's going to be an issue or not. We've only got these bits left on the sprues to do. I think there's a couple of bits on the other one as well. So, bum, 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 bum. Let's have a look. There's there's an order this needs to go in. So I think we'll put the dashboard on. What's the time? 20, yeah, are we going to get this done in the next 10 minutes? Because I was only going to do an hour tonight. But I think we are going to overrun rather slightly. But hey ho, it's not like there's any football on tonight. I'm trying to work out how does that. Okay, how does that fit on there? Not entirely sure. I think what we need to do is pop the bonnet on. That's going to give us a better idea. I see that sits that sits up like that. Okay, doke, right, I get it, I get it. I think for this we will use a bit of the white cap because that's gonna require a little bit of adjustment. Aha, all right, okay, it sits on there like so. I get it, yeah, I get it. Every day's a school day, people. So we'll just anchor that in on the edges like so. And then I'll take care of that bit. Lordy, we're going to have to go onto another sprue here. Um, B38 and B37. So. This is where it's all going to suddenly slow down now. It's probably going to be about another half hour just doing all these little teeny weeny bits, but.
Oh, okay. These are oh, right. Okay, these these have no location. They just literally glue on there. So okay, I'm tempted to leave them off until last. So we will get the rear part of the cab in place here. as well. So I'm just I'm just problem solving here at the moment. I'm just trying to work out a particular thing to do with painting. I'm just my brain gone quiet for a second there. Just trying to work this out. Yeah, I know what I can do. I'm just trying to work out what paints to use on this. Uh, and I do remember I've got some of the AK real colours which cover the counter scheme. So I'll probably use those. Um, how does that fit in there? Well, it fits in the other way around, obviously. Yes, there we go. Okay, that's that sort of you put a glue on there, but it sort of wants to. It wants to kind of sit forward there, but I think it should be. Should it be upright? Let's check the drawings again. Yeah, it should be upright, but it just wants to sit forward for some reason. So let's just do a little bit of problem solving here as to why it's doing that. Okay, what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of white cap at the bottom just to get it to key in. Key into place. Oh, come on. There is a temptation to want to push it so that it kind of butt joins against the back of the seat there, but I don't think it's supposed to do that. I think there is supposed to be a slight gap so that it sits up. It sits a bit more vertical. Yeah, that's there. We'll just 
kind of seal it in place there with a bit of uh, the liquid. Oh, goodness me. We've still got, uh, we've got a number of teeny, teeny little bits to go on now. So we are going to try and uh, blitz along. Uh, Paul Milligan says, just bought some of the white cup cement as my usual green top to me and you've cleared up the difference for me, Jem. Uh, yes. Well, well, actually, we'll, whilst we uh, have a swig of tea, what we have is make sure the lids are on properly. It's to me, I do three different types of liquid cement here. The white cap is really thick. Well, it's, it's thickish, as you can see there, by the way, it wobbles around in there. That's quite slow drying, and that is good for large surfaces, but anything where you want a little bit of kind of play with it to make adjustments. Spencer actually uses this and he uses, he applies it with a toothpick on some bits where he just needs to kind of, you know, adjust the fit before it, uh, before it dries. But this is, this is good for brushing onto surfaces and kind of, you know, for, for butt joins and things. The extra thin is much runnier as you can probably see there and it dries quite quickly. So this is good for capillary action and for very small parts and for areas where you've got a good join. So you just brush it along there and let the liquid cement do the job for you. The extra thin, extra thin quick setting, as it says on the bottle, this stuff flashes off remarkably quickly. And this is pretty much my favorite one to use because for the most part, I'm always just holding bits in place and then letting this kind of run in and then, you know, we'll demonstrate that right now, actually. So yeah, they are three different types of cement. People sometimes ask what's the best liquid cement out there to which the answer is, what are you using it for? What, you know, what do you need it for? I would always suggest at the very least is get one of the greens, one of the green caps and one of the white caps. And then you're, you're kind of pretty much covered then. Uh, we have B51, all oh, these are, I hate cleaning up round bits because I always end up with them not being quite as round as they should be. So we have a bit, oops, goodness me, a little bit of clean up at the bottom there. So yeah, three, three distinctly different types of, uh, of liquid cement for three largely different applications. Oh, it's Daisy. Um, one of the things that I might talk about with Drew when we do the next show, which won't be Sunday, I'll ask because I'm going to a garden party. So it will be Wednesday. But it's a, a noticeable thing when it comes to filler is... So I just have to take my glasses off and I'm just carefully trying to thin that trim that piece off i've noticed this sometimes with filler people say what's the best model filler out there well again it comes down to what what are you using it for and i do frequently see people using you know model filler good old-fashioned model filler that comes in a tube and they are literally smothering joins with it or gaps or you know whatever you want to call it but they're smothering surfaces with it in a in a kind of a texture like royal icing on a, on a christmas cake so you've got all these peaks and troughs and they're putting it over a wider area than they need to and then when it comes around to clean up, they're they're obviously having to they're having to do a quite a bit of sanding just to get the filler level before they're actually blending it into the plastic. And it's it's one of those things that model filler does have its uses, but it's not necessarily something you want to go to all the time. And I was seeing somebody using it on a project over the weekend and I thought to myself, for the life of me, I think you'd probably be better off using some Mr. Surfacer rather than using model, you know, model filler. So, ah, that's what we're looking for. I was 
looking for something we haven't cleaned up and it's that little bit on the top there so yeah it's with experience you do start to realize that oh this is this is impossible this this is this is too small for my useless fingers you do start to realize that one thing you know one particular thing isn't always suitable for every task and you know you you, you learn that through experience i've learned that because down the years model filler well that that's all i use and just that realization one day that i could actually be trying to use something else and i think that came with mr surfacer oh not blimey over 20 years ago now 20 25 years ago that i started using model filler less and less and when i started using super glue and mixing super glue with black mr surfacer and creating my own black super glue and suddenly realizing that super glue is a fantastic way of filling sink marks and gaps and things and it's not suitable for everything but it's suitable for a, a quite a few tasks and yeah that makes a difference so right okay we've got this on here so again this is going to be an example of letting the extra thin do its job just touch it in there And we're away. I'm just making sure that's on straight. And then what I'll do is, is just brush it down the side there. And that's it. It flashes off that quickly. It's it's miracle stuff, I tell you. But you know, I'm not I'm not talking about fillers in a you know kind of like a derogatory sense when I say it comes with experience. I mean it. You know, it's just one of those things that. Uh, with any kind of hobby the more the more you build and the more hours you rack up the more you start to refine you know the uh, you know the things that you use so you know you you try and impart that knowledge to people and that experience to people so that sometimes they don't have to go down the blind alleys that you went in doggedly using something when perhaps it wasn't the best thing to be you know to be using so I use a variety of fillers here. I actually do use model filler. In fact, my favorite one is actually Tamiya, um, Tamiya filler or putty, whatever you call it. And the good thing about that is you can thin it with Mr. Color thinner to make like a liquidy kind of putty. Then you can brush that into the areas that you want to fill. And if, and if you're just bridging kind of gaps and things, then you can just go in there with some more Mr. Color Thinner and a cotton bud and remove the excess. So when you're kind of like just things like panel like panels that don't quite fit, rather than using model filler and trying to sand it, and then you're going to lose all your detail and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is just use Mr. Surfacer or create your own liquid putty and do it that way so yeah you you do start to realize that there are specific tools for, for specific jobs how we ever existed decades ago with a tube of airfix stringy airfix tube glue and a toothpick but we did but i wouldn't want to go back to that i wouldn't want to go back to tube glue might do as a as a kind of nostalgia thing actually have the tube glue build see how we get on with that so let's get this oh ping oh. so you rapid progress on the rest of this and then suddenly everything slows down for the uh, the small details but devil is in the details Okay, clearly my plans tonight for this to be a simple hour are rapidly going out the window. So this is going to be a 90 minute one. So so if you have to zone out, <laughs> zone out by all means. You can watch it on catch up and fast forward. Um, let's just see a, um, a quick uh, thing of the comments here. Let's have a look, see what people are saying. Um, uh, tube glue... 
added textures to the surface when it went stringy. It did. It's just, it's just awful stuff. Um, Dave Fleming says a big blob, a big blob of blue tack. I think he's referring to uh, sticking the bottles of things down to uh, down to the surface. Yeah, big big blob of blue tack. I've got some expanded polystyrene here somewhere. Actually, there is a there's a fantastic video out there. We will pop it back onto the timeline again. It's of Model World. Those of you who remember Model World with Bob Symes, lovely man, and. He's talking to Roy Dilley, also a lovely man, who's building a figure of a British soldier. He's using like an airfix rifleman or something. But when you see Roy working on his workbench, and he, he had he had what he called liquid plastic, which was essentially um, shavings of sprue that he dropped into a bottle of Humbrol Britfix liquid poly, and it kind of turns it like a liquid plastic. When you see the video, <laughs> Roy... I'm not kidding. He's got his bottle of Humbrol liquid poly or his liquid plastic, whatever it, whatever it is. He's got it secured to a house brick with an elastic band. Because Roy obviously knew that, you know, you only had to look at that bottle and burn, that's it, it fall over. So, yes, it's good stuff, though. I love Model World. It was just, yeah, well, imagine that. Back in the... Back in the oldie days that uh, the BBC had a program on television de de dedicated to the art of scale modelling. Having said that, though, Channel 5, bless them, well, they had two series of the uh, Model Railway Challenge, which apparently was a rating success. I'm hoping that it, it will be coming back. I can only imagine its lack of... Um, its lack of appearance on our screens last year was was because of covid but yeah isn't that fantastic to have a a program on uh, on mainstream television in 20 well 2019 and 2020 about modeling Not railway modeling but it's still modeling utterly brilliant um right okay that's got some bits and pieces to glow on here and i'm trying to see these are all tiny bits oh lord um B-53 and B-54. It's like a game of battleships, this. Okay, B-54. The weird thing about this... LRDG Chevy is I keep I keep thinking it is 148. It's not it's 156, but I think Drew and I commented last night on the show that Rubicon do some civilian figures and they actually you could get away with using them in 148 scale because I think there's a it's like a, a village woman and a, and a child and a, I think a, like a villager. You know, I think uh, we're all different. We're all different heights. We're all different sizes. And so I think those will work beautifully in 148 scale. As indeed, I think some of the the other things they do, like the, they do like a, a, a thing of pallets of produce and, Boxes of fish and things like that. You could use those in 148 scale, no problem. There are some precious souls out there who think they can tell the difference by visually looking at things, but I just don't think you, you know, that that soldier is too tall for 148 scale. Well, no, he's not. He's just six foot three. Of course, I'm making a mistake now, gluing all these little bits in and still not knowing whether that mould part line is actually going to shut up under a coat of primer. Hey-ho, it's a, it's a learning experience, as is the fact that I have just uh, glued B42, assemble last. Right, okay. Um, and it's saying B44, assemble last, assemble last. Tell me to assemble all these things last. 
Should have paid attention to that, but never mind. Um, <laughs> assemble last. Mm, okay. It is, it is red on the instruction sheet here as well. You'd think I'd have, think I'd have noticed that, but... Right, okay, yeah, well, no, we are going to use that bit. We are going to use the water condenser. Oh, there is it. Oh, goodness me, I'm trying to get that out without snipping off the... And B44 says assemble, assemble last. Right, okay, where is B44? Uh... Come in, B44. Where are you? Um, B44. There he is. It's a little bit tricky to get in there, but we will just scrape that out. Despite the fact that this thing is, you know, it's, it's quite big, it is actually quite nifty at getting into very tight places because the sponge is actually quite soft. So you can, it does abrade without creating flat spots. And this is what I like about these um, infinity sanders. But we will aid things a bit there by just having a quick scrape on there with a knife blade. It's good to go. Oh, keeps bashing his head on the camera here. And it has to be said, living in the southwest of England, here in glorious Somerset, is am extraordinarily blessed with actually having four very good kind of model shops and things, or model retailers in the area. Um, most established of which is Antics in Bristol, which used to be kind of like the years ago it was the Modeler's Den. But that's an excellent source for bits and pieces. Oh, this, this, this is going to be tricky, this bit. Um, I've also we're very lucky to have a uh, through model center out towards the Wiltshire border, which is excellent. Always a good always a good trip out there. Always very enjoyable. And that's like an old fashioned model shop from my youth. It is just absolutely crammed with models. And it's it's quite kind of you go in there and you look up and there's just like shelves and shelves of them and you suddenly feel like you're a you're an eight year old who needs to have a, a bit of a kind of a, a lift to reach something. Uh, we also have Online, we have premium hobbies who do lots and lots of Japanese goodies, which is where I got these infinity sanders from. But they do a lot of the Gunzi paints, and the uh, I bought some of the lascivious colors, I think they're called lasciviousus colors, lascivious, uh, lasciviousus colors. 
and there uh, we'll put some links up after the show they're very good and i've used them and we also had jadlam out towards glastonbury who oh, have a large range of things so yeah i'm extremely blessed to have all these things literally on my on the doorstep when i do know that some people have absolutely nothing so oops daisy this is a uh, cat and crowd you know, gate crash in the scene which is why i tend not to kind of complain because uh you know it's not much to complain about and also we've got a hardware shop down our high street which not only stocks stocks humbrol but also stocks games workshop there is another shop in the high street which does computer stuff they also stock games workshop for some reason i think they've they're kind of like cross appeal to the ps2 kind of fantasy war gamer type people so if i if i need any um games workshop paint or any humbrol paint I can certainly get them down the road. And I've just remembered, uh, about three quarters of a mile from me down on the marina here, there's also Model Railways Direct. So, yeah, that's kind of, I'm not complaining. Apparently, there's a model shop in Cheltenham as well, but I haven't... I don't know. About where, what are we doing with this, JM? Just about to glue that in the wrong place. And I was going to go and to visit the one in Cheltenham because I thought that looks good, and it's right near a cafe. So, you know, always a good trip where you can have tea and cake in there. And then COVID came along, so I'm afraid that's been... Those plans have been put back until it's a little bit safer to go out there. Froome I'm quite happy to go to because it, it's it's a fairly quiet town and I know my spots and I know how to get in and out there rapidly and safely. Cheltenham, I'm not, I don't know very well, so confidence to go there is not quite there at the moment um that gear stick's leaning over to one side but yeah it's a gear stick let's just get a bit more okay who's who's still awake here um uh, marino says this tiny truck looks very cool it is very true um it is very cool, Marina. Paul Medigan says, do you ever use treat tweezers? I don't find parts ping everywhere. Aha. Well, funny you say that, Paul. Because I've got my Tamiya flat tweezers here. And I have my Tamiya pointy tweezers here. And I also have these. I can't remember where I got these from, but these are these are awesome. And these all sit on my uh they all they'll sit in my uh workbench here um but also he says getting up um do i use tweezers yeah <laughs> and uh yeah these are the uh, these are the other tweezers that i sometimes use uh and It gets it gets worse. Goodness me, it gets worse because sitting in here somewhere, is the is the awesome set of tweezers that we discovered on the internet a few years ago, and they're oh they're kicking around here somewhere, but. Bear with, bear with. Here we go. Should keep. I should keep them out in the open. Got this set off of Amazon a couple of years ago. I think. I think now they're about nine pounds. These are absolutely brilliant. These are absolute top quality 
superb tweezers. Uh, Drew put me onto them, and I ended up buying a couple of sets. I sent some over to New Zealand, I seem to remember. We'll put those where we can find them next time. So, yeah, uh, long story short, Paul, yeah, I do use tweezers. Um, but I do sometimes, uh, I do manage to get bits to go into orbit when I'm using tweezers. So, uh, right, let's try and let's find B46. We are, we're going to try and wrap this up by half past so that, um, so that I can go and have some supper. We still have some bits and pieces here. I think we yeah, I think we'll just end it a quarter past and then we'll um you've gen you've you've generally got the idea of how um how well this goes together and, and just you know the, the kind of levels of detail for something that is essentially a simplified kind of war gaming model, but don't confuse simplified with crude because I actually think this is uh it's pretty nifty. So much so that I'll be sticking my hand in my pocket and actually getting another couple of things from their range to uh, to try out. In between all the other projects. <laughs> um, yeah, the... Uh, Special Hobby Whirlwind, my favourite aeroplane. It's it, it's slowly coming along, but because that's a me project, because I'm building that for myself, that does kind of get a little bit sidelined because I've got other projects to get on with, which are slightly more um, slightly more kind of pressing. Uh, goodness me, I'm trying to work out how this bit goes on. Um, B46, you're a bit vague. How do you go on? Because going by the shape of the slot there, going by the shape of the slot, you kind of fit in like that, but Hmm, I need to look at the... <sighs> Nothing here that actually kind of really clarifies how that bit fits in there. Okay. All right, we're on, we're on our own on that one. Um... The drawing is a really odd angle and b46 so right it suggests it kind of sits like that I genuinely have no idea. It certainly, or oh, does it? Certainly doesn't fit like that because it collides with that. So we're just going to we're going to take a punt and glue it that way. If it's wrong, it's wrong. But now you see there, I've just made the mistake of using the extra thin and trying to do it as a. Oh no, it does work. I'm not sure that's right. I don't know what. It's the only way it fits, but it doesn't look Daisy. It doesn't look right for some reason. Let's try that again.
but well, it's the only way that fits. So I mean, we're going to have to live with that. If it's horribly wrong, it's horribly wrong. Um, bum, 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 bum. So I'm just looking at the instruction sheet here. And B45, there's another one on the other side. Oh, lordy. B45. These are, these are baffling bits to try and get in because they, okay, there's that. Does that fit there like that? I'd imagine it does. And you see here, what we're going to do is, we're going to do a Spencer. And that is a little bit of that on a cocktail stick and just Drop it in place there. Then get this part, which I can only imagine it. Faces. No, it's just face. Okay, right, okay. So it faces inwards like that. Is it utterly right, okay, yeah. Utterly bizarre. Talking about utterly bizarre, I'm, I'm missing all the uh, UFO documentaries on Blaze, which for the most part I, I usually watch and sit there shouting at the television, it's an aeroplane. It's an aeroplane. What is wrong with you people? So, um, yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm definitely more of a Scully than a Molder when it comes to these things. But I do. I do enjoy one. I do enjoy watching them. They are, by and large, harmless fun. Okie doke. Yeah. All right. Well, that sits. That sits like that according to the drawings. I'm still not entirely convinced about that one is that supposed to fit backwards no anyway uh what are we oh we're at twenty one thirty. so i'll tell you what we will we will wrap that up for now we don't you don't want to sit here all night watching me uh babble away here so what we are going to do is we're just going to do a little quick trick here which is pop some blue tack onto the surfaces for the wheels like so. So that will enable us to drop the wheels on. Certainly illustrative of how how time management and how long it takes to actually build something. Because I thought I'd honestly get most of this done in an hour, but mm, no, I think I'd still be here two hours later doing this. But what we can do is, there we go. Look at that. That, even in its rough stump, Rough state here with the wheels coming off. The wheels on the bus go round and round, but even in its. Oh, goodness me. It's 
that does look pretty awesome. I <laughs> really, really am impressed by that. Whatever the deficiencies of the, I mean, the, okay, the underside, you can see on the underside there, it is simplified beyond beyond matchbox simplification, but you're really not seeing any of that. You, all you're seeing is uh, are the upper surfaces, and there is more stuff to go on this, but once that's painted up and weathered, I think that looks absolutely fabulous. I genuinely am really impressed by this. As I say, it's a range of models that's largely just passed me by. It's a scale that's passed me by, but I like that. I really do like that, and I'm really looking forward to getting to the point of whacking some paint on it. Um, so thank you for tuning in for the last 90 minutes of absolute babble. Um, we will probably try and get the rest of this finished off probably early tomorrow evening and pop some pictures up on the timeline tomorrow night. But yeah, Rubicon models, I can wholeheartedly say from what I've done so far is that if you're not trade their stuff, grab one of their kits. They're, these are about 10, 11 quid. I'm seriously, seriously impressed with that. So like I say, every, every day is a school day and to come across a new manufacturer and how they approach things and, you know, especially ABS plastic, which is, you know, it's the first time I've actually built a kit in ABS plastic. But yeah, really, really impressed with that. Um, so uh, on that note, it's just to say thank you for thank you for watching. That's very kind of you. Uh, we won't be back Sunday. Perhaps we might do another pop-up live tomorrow night and finish this off. Heaven help us. Um, and we should be back uh, midweek anyway with, if not with Drew, then with somebody else. We'll find somebody. We'll, we'll rope somebody in. Uh, so as ever, thank you for watching. Stay safe. Stay out of trouble. And we'll see you very, very soon. See you later.